Hi there, this is Ms. Blatchford and I'm here to talk to you about analyzing domain specific words. You've already learned how to identify them and define them and understand them, so now we're going to analyze them. To start out, we're going to read a part of um, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, one of my favorite books. Now, this passage, I'm going to link to it so you can read the whole thing, but I'm just going to read one paragraph for the sake of time. So I'm going to start right here. Harry looked into the fire. Now he came to think about it. Every odd thing that had ever made his aunt and uncle furious with him had happened when he, Harry, had been upset or angry. Chased by Dudley's gang, he had somehow found himself out of their reach, dreading going to school with that ridiculous haircut. He'd managed to make it grow back. And the very last time Dudley had hit him, Hadn't he gotten his revenge without even realizing he was doing it? Hadn't he set a boa constrictor on him? Harry looked back at Hagrid smiling, and he saw that Hagrid was positively beaming at him. All right. Now, as I was reading this passage, I noticed several words that were domain-specific to reading literature. These are not words that you usually use in your everyday language. They're words that you're going to come across as you read literature. So let me show you a few that I found in this passage. Blazing, and it wasn't talking about a fire. Beaming, crackpot, and squeal. Now those are not words that I use on an everyday basis but I was able to use my context clues to figure out what they mean. So, I'm gonna pick one of these words to analyze. Okay, analyze means figure out why the author chose this word. I'm gonna choose beaming. So one way to get to know a word better is to do something called a Freyer model. You're going to be working with the Freyer model as you analyze words on this assignment. So you can see that there's five sections. The first section you add your word, then you add the definition in your own words. So I actually looked up the word beaming. Even though I had an idea what it meant, I went ahead and Googled it. And then I put the definition in my own words. Meaning means smiling with joy. Now in this box, I need to find a synonym or more than one synonym and include words and pictures. So I have grin, smile, and joyous look. Those words are similar to beaming, although they don't mean exactly the same thing. I also found this picture that looks like beaming and this one. To me, these two pictures show smiling with joy, not just a normal smile. Now, down here, I need to show some examples. So I wrote the word beaming, or a form of the word beaming, in two sentences. So my first sentence says, the mother beamed at her son with pride as he ran his first home run. So let's see, did the mother smile with joy at her son? Of course she did if her son was running a home run. Next, Cookie Monster beamed at the chocolate chip cookie waiting for him on the plate. Of course we know Cookie Monster was beaming at that cookie. Okay, in this box you need to have non-examples. So I'm going to use the word incorrectly here. It's going to feel really weird, but this helps you learn how not to use it. So look at this first one. The flight attendant beamed at the rude passenger who wouldn't sit down in his seat. Would a flight attendant, someone who works on an airplane, be smiling with joy at a rude passenger? Um, no, that's a no. Next, Goldilocks beamed at the three bears as she ran away, screaming in fear. Now, did Goldilocks smile with joy at the bears? No, she was screaming and running away. Doing this Freyer model really helps me to understand that beaming is more than just a smile or a grin. It's really a joyous look. It's just um, a very 